Nothing but good things happening in Leafland tonight. As the Leafs finally beat the Montreal Canadiens and they win in convincing fashion tonight. 5-1 over the Habs at Scotiabank Arena tonight. And with the W, the Leafs have won a couple games in a row now. 34-14-8 and eight on the season. They exercise those demons that are the Montreal Canadiens. And we got to see some new faces. Ryan O'Reilly and Nola Chari were in the lineup today. And Sheldon Keefe was said that they were adamant on being in the lineup for tonight's hockey game. And rightfully so for Ryan O'Reilly being a, you know, a Toronto boy or being a Toronto fan growing up. You play the Montreal Canadiens in your, in your debut. Yeah, you want that. And I thought they looked great. Again, you know, I, I thought they were... Uh, Nolachari stood out very, very much to me. Made an impact on the bottom six. Did something in the bottom six. It was brilliant. No stat line of no goals, no assists, one shot on goal, and one hit. Like, none of those useless ones, right? And I'm going to, before I even go any further with this game, Nolachari played 14 minutes and 22 seconds, had five shots and five hits. Oh! It's a beautiful thing. Didn't mean for that joke to happen, but it did. Let's break down this puppy. Nothing happened in the first period. Shots and goal were 16-13 in favor of the Leafs in that period. And uh, Jake Allen was making some big time stops in the early going of that contest. Then Joey Anderson scores into deflection from the point. Early on in the second, 42 seconds in, a turnover by Morgan Riley uh, behind his own net really uh, ends up leading to that goal. So tough one there for Mo. You have the puck on your stick in your own end. That puck's got to get out. But the Leafs now trail one nothing. less than a minute into the second period. And Leaf fans instantly are like, oh God, no, not again, please. No, no, no. And even a few minutes into that, right, they, they still can't score. And we're thinking, okay, is Jake Allen, are we going to get goalie by Jake Allen tonight? Well, late on the power play, over five minutes in, Rasmus Sandin fires the puck around the boards, and the, def the Canadian's defenseman tries to knock it down. He can't. Matthews picks it up, and Bunting's going right to the net. Matthews puts a, the puck on a platter for Michael Bunting, who buries the one-timer past Jake Allen, and we are tied at one. Bunting from Matthews and Sandin at 5.32 of the second period, and the fellas are on the board. Eight minutes after that, Pierre Engvall winning a puck battle along the boards. Albeit he, you know, just, I guess, outmatched his guy in the corner. And their guy picked it up. And I don't know what he tried to do. I got actually have the, video, the clip right in front of me that I'm going to watch as I'm talking about it. He outmuscles the guy. And their guy Pat, tries to go back to the D-man. It goes off the skate right back to Pierre Engvall, who fires it on. And it squeaks through Jake Allen. And it goes in. Engvall's got 12 on the year. The Leafs now have the lead. 13-20 into the second period, less than seven minutes to go in the frame. But they weren't done, right? Late in the period, as a penalty expires, Rasmus Sandin's about to enter the zone, but he fires a pass across the ice right at the blue line to Ryan O'Reilly, who enters the zone. And I know it could just because it's his first game. It's a new guy, and I love it, I love it. And I'm being very nitpicky, but happy about it. That pass between the legs of the defender was so calm, cool, and collected, you love it. From, uh, from Ryan O'Reilly, and it goes to the tape of Callie Yarncruck, who fires it over then to, uh, who was the, who's, to Michael Bunting, and he fires it far side as, as Jake Allen baits too much to the short side, and he beats him! Ryan O'Reilly's got his first point as a Leaf! A secondary assist on that goal, and then when the Leaf, when they announce that, that uh, Ryan O'Reilly gets the assist, gets the, stand, gets the, the loud cheer from the crowd... And the Leafs, more importantly, have a 3-1 lead. That goal was at 18-20 of the second period. Uh, bunting from Yarncruck and Ryan O'Reilly at 18-20. And he had a 3-1 lead heading into the third. Shots and goal were 15-8 in favor of the Leafs in that period. Now, close strong. Do not take your foot off the gas. Let's go. And they did just that. Less than five minutes in, Austin Matthews, the puck gets fired around the boards from Gio, right? He's at the right point. He passes the puck kind of around the boards. Matthews picks it up. And look, it's not going to be talked about very much. But the way he positioned his body against that defender. Shielded him from getting the puck. He picks it up. Then tries to turn to the front of the net. Gets hooked on the way. There's a penalty going to be called. But he plays through it. Passes it back door. 
to Willie Nylander, who buries it past Jake Allen. The Leafs got a 4-1 lead. One and assist from Austin Matthews. Nylander from Matthews and Geo at 347 of the second period. But they weren't done. Just over five minutes ago, a point shot from, uh, was it Pierre Engvall who fired on or Rasmus Sandy? I think it was Pierre Engvall who fires it on from the point and it gets stopped initially by Jake Allen or he got knocked down. I can't remember what happened there. And David Camp, David Camp pitching the tent, getting a goal, his first goal in this calendar year of 2023. Yeah, it's been that long for David Camp. I'm about, I'm going to try and look up now his last goal. Leaf fans, because it's been, it's been a long day. And I'm not going to start singing. I'm not going to start singing. Uh, That's terrible. His last goal, December 8th against the LA Kings. It's been a long time since David Camp found the back of the net for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He did so tonight. He desperately needed it. Sandy and Engvall grab assists on that one at 14.53. And the Leafs get a 5-1 lead. Joseph Wall makes a couple nice stops late. And they win it 5-1 over the Habs. They outshoot the Habs 11-9 in the third period. Now shoot them for the game 41-30. With the amount of quality chance, the Leafs could have had some more. Jake Allen made some really good stops in this one. But again, the Leafs just overmatched the Habs. As they should. And we've seen in the last two games now, they have not played down to their opponent. They have beat them down. Every time they made a push, Leafs punch back. And, I, and I'm proud of them for it. I, I really am. Let's go to these player stats. Joseph Wall. Uh, again, like I guess I don't think he got tested a whole lot, but he did have to make some nice stops. One on the, uh, it was like a two-on-one or three-on-one that he had. Uh, there was a Mike Hoffman little short break where he had to make a nice stop on that. Uh, there were some nice stops from Joseph Wall in the game. One goal on 30 shots. Again, not the prolific offense, obviously, of the Montreal Canadiens, but he went out there and did his job. Gave his team a chance to win. One goal on 30 shots. Great job from Joseph Wall. Michael Bunting had two goals. Pierre Engvall, the goal and an assist. Rasmus Sandy with two assists. Austin Matthews with two assists. Ryan O'Reilly got an assist in the game. He was a plus one. Had two hits in 16-12. Excuse me. And I love that he was getting power play time as well. And Noel Achari. Come on, let's be honest. If you watch the game, did, did not... Depth line, like did Zach Aston Reese had a couple chances at a goal. Obviously, David Camp scored in this game. Pierre Engvall scored in this game. And Nolachari had five shots and five hits in 14 22. The bottom six, at least today, had an identity. Even Kerfoot had a chance. Oh, yeah, they didn't bury it, but still, you had five hits from Nolachari. What have we what did I talk about in the in the trade video yesterday? Going into this deal, going into tonight's game, the Leafs' l- team leaders in hits before getting Nail Noel Achari was Rasmus Sandin at like 113. Dude has 168 going into today's game. He lays the body. He had five hits today. He had five shots on net. I loved his game. Again, it's one game, so it could just be obviously this big energy boost from these guys, which I understand. But if this is something of what we're going to be seeing moving forward, it's great. Would I love to see this team go out there and get another defenseman? Absolutely. That's still the one thing we look at. Like a, I saw Luke Shen in the comments, and look, I'd love a Luke Shen. Jake McCabe, Gavrikov, but the, obviously those, those two guys, the last two guys I mentioned, the price might be a little too high for them. So yeah, Luke Shen would be great. You know, big guy, sound defensively, physical. Like that's, it's, a, it's a guy this team needs. Other than that, I don't know what else. Samsonov's obviously out with an illness, so we're not really sure who's going to be playing tomorrow night with having not... You'll probably see Shelgren on the road against Chicago tomorrow. Uh, Assuming Samsonov's not ready to go. If he is, great. He'll be in the the cage tomorrow. If not, I don't want to say don't be surprised if Wall goes back-to-back, but it's hard to say. They've played Shelgren before. Right, it's not like this is a guy. Not like it's Dylan Ferguson coming up from the Marlies, and you're like, you, or Keith Petrozelli that you cannot play. You got to figure out a way not to play this guy. So you would go, you would have gone wall back to back. But you have Eric Shelgren, who's played some games for this team quite a bit this year, who did last year. So is he a great goaltender? Eh, that's, that's debatable. However, it wasn't a very high quality, high danger, high you know stress 
for Joseph Wall today. So you could go back to back, but with the Leafs having to travel to Chicago, maybe not. All right. Special teams wise, Leafs were one for three on their power play. Montreal had the one PP. They did not score on it. And the Leafs won in hits. 28-27. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. Next up for the Buds. They end this five-game stretch of teams that are not very good. Tomorrow evening, 6 p.m. puck drop between the Leafs and the Blackhawks. That game, I might be uploading that video the next day, guys. Yeah, I'm not too sure how it's going to play out tomorrow. Um, we'll see how it goes. Leafs, Blackhawks uh, in Chicago at 6 p.m. tomorrow evening. All right, as the Leafs look to win their third consecutive and do exactly what we were all hoping and go four or five during this stretch. Right, win four of the five games against these crappy teams. You should have won all five the way you played against Columbus there, but it is what it is. You lost it. You go into, you go into Chicago, you win tomorrow, you win three straight, you're in good shape. And you win back-to-backs, would be, which would be great. All right, so you know what, guys? That's going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video and the W today, smack the like button. Do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. You guys not already? Comment down below your thoughts on the video, thoughts on the game. Would you like? Would you not like from today's game for the Toronto Maple Leafs? The Twitter and Instagram links are down below. So follow up, send me a DM. You guys do all that great stuff. The Discord link is down below as well. So if you've not followed up there already, please go do so. And I will talk to you guys. Okay, Raptors edition. Yeah, they're not back till Thursday as they host New Orleans. Uh, the Pelicans at Scotiabank Arena, 7.30 there. And as for the Leafs, they're back in action tomorrow night on the second night of a back-to-back as they're in Chicago taking on the Blackhawks. 6 p.m. puck drop there. Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and the W this evening. We'll talk to you guys then.